Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your Tuesday or Wednesday for anybody who lives in the future because that's where people reside sometimes. Anyways, let's talk about today's video sponsor and it's actually our merch. You see my friends, we have an It Just Works and Ray Tracing merch that you can pick up at the link in the video description. Rickass, Rickass is demoing our It Just Works shirt because it just works and look at him, he's working. Come, come show everybody your It Just Works merch. There it is. Oh, it works. Thank you so much, Rickus. Thank you for working and getting the stuff things done. We have it in shirts, we have it in hoodies, we have it in uh, we did phone cases, mugs, whatever you want. You can pick it up at the link in the video description. Also, let us know if you want any hot news merch because we've been working on thinking about that. So you can let us uh, comments and just, we'll see. Anyways, let's move on into today's first article, which is about how this is one of the strangest times to be in the market for buying a graphics card. Not only do you have the glory that is the RTX series that has come and descended its ray tracing and deep learning super sampling upon us, but we also have things like the Radeon 7 with its one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth and 16 gigabytes of HBM2. And we also have things like the GTX 1660 Ti, which is everything you wanted in an RTX card just without all the RTX crap. And then you have everybody who's looking at what's out on the market right now and saying, that's a bunch of crap, I want Navi! And there's a whole bunch of people just looking around saying, when are we gonna buy graphics cards? Well, that apparently is a huge issue to a bunch of retailers right now because there's a lot of overstock going on. Not only are GPU sales down from each quarter from Q4 last year up until Q1 this year, but then also Q1 on Q1, we've seen a decrease of around 3%. There's there's some pretty intriguing uh, other things going on. So AMD's overall shipments of graphics cards has decreased 7% quarter on quarter. Intel's total shipments decreased 0.67 and Nvidia's decreased 7.62%. My goodness. That is, that is a drop-off of drop-offs. This is not something that's normally seen. There's usually an annual increase of around 11%, not a decrease of 3%. This obviously can be tied to the fact that January, February of last year was like peak crypto, like, hype and stupidity like it wasn't the peak of the the numbers but it was the peak of mining and people being stupid and why are you not even speaking to me reese you're just you're silently miming behind the camera <laughs> we're not in a libre anyways so gpu shipments are down and there has been excess inventory that is building up at retailers and potentially on amd and nvidia's side so this is good for consumers because that should mean since there's an in, uh, overstock of supply, demand is also low, the prices should fall, which would mean that we should be able to get reasonably priced graphics cards from last generation. But then it's weird because AMD and Nvidia want to push their new stuff, but they can't because retailers aren't selling out of their old stuff. And like even here in South Africa on Wootware's website, you can get a GTX 1060 for 4,200 Rand, or you can get a 1660 Ti for 4,700 Rand. Why would I buy the 1060? I'm sorry, Wootware, that 1660 Ti for 500 extra bucks just makes a whole lot of heckin' sense. Like this is a really weird scenario that's going on. And this is actually even partnered with a price cut that has apparently happened on GTX 1060s to drop the price to about 180 euros, a 10% drop from the previous week. This isn't dictated by Nvidia, but this is just what they're seeing at retailers overall, that the 1066 gig is now going for 180 euros, which actually makes it pretty significantly cheap. And considering that we're supposed to be getting a GTX 1660 in 10 days, which is supposed to be priced at a 1060 and then also perform like a 1060, even though it's not, it's based on Turing and it has either GDR5 or GDR6, uh, it, this is just a weird environment. How is Nvidia gonna sell the overstock of 1060s while also trying to push 1660 stuff down our throat, while also trying to encourage us that we need ray tracing and buy the RTX series cards, while everybody's also still holding out for Navi, which is gonna be a massive disappointment because AMD Radeon Technologies groups always lets us down. I, I got it off my chest, I just had to say it. I'm as excited for Navi as anybody, but I'm also really anticipating disappointment. So, like, I don't know if I have good advice for anybody, should you buy graphics? graphics cards right now? Well, it does seem like we're in a really good spot as far as pricing for performance compared to what we've been in for the past 12 months. 
But at the same time, there's so much hope for the future for things that are coming that I don't understand why people would buy now. Yeah, I just, I'm in a really stuck place on what you could recommend for people to do. Obviously the 1660 Ti is a great value, especially when you put it up to 1060s. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. You know what else I don't know? Whether or not we're gonna get an RTX 2050, but uh, Dell's making that harder for us to figure out because over on their website for the Dell G515, there's a little like asterisk thing that you click on and it shows you that USB-C Thunderbolt will be on systems with RTX 2060 and USB-C DisplayPort will be on systems with RTX 2050. There's no RTX 2050. There's no RTX 2050 laptop thing. And what the poo, like why would anybody want a lower end RTX card than the 2060? It can barely ray trace as it is. What the heck would a 2050 do for us? Are we getting an RTX 2050? We're still getting a GTX 1660 and 1650. What is Nvidia doing besides messing with the masses and trying to get us all on the mind share of them before AMD comes in and takes the heels of their money with Navi? Yes, hype train. Choo choo. But you want more Navi hype train? I actually do have some news. Apparently AMD has patented variable rate shading. Nvidia has already implemented variable rate shading. It's already in games. Like I think it's in Wolfenstein 2 right now for RTX cards. But it appears that AMD has their own version of it that should be coming out for Navi. And essentially what it does is it makes it so that you're not rendering all pixels on a screen at the same fidelity because you don't need to see all pixels on the screen at the same fidelity because you're not, you're only looking at one place. Like your, your eyes have focus. So you, when you're looking at what's supposed to be on the screen, then the other pixels that aren't supposed to be the primary ones that you're gazing at, those become less rendered and so it's an easier way to get better quality out of things that you need to see and then reducing the workload on a GPU to make it run faster so you get higher frame rate sort of like deep learning super sampling but not as gimmicky and as uh, necessary for giant supercomputers to exist it's cool we'll see if it's on Navi it's a possibility they we just saw that they filed a patent back in 2017 so it's possible that it's coming or it's not at all who knows but you know what i do know apex legends has been legend wait for it 50 million people playing the game dairy it's gonna be legend wait for it and i hope you're not lactose intolerant because the second half of that word is dairy 50 dairies 50 million dairies that's how many dairies we've got going on in one month Holy smokes, this game has taken over, especially when you consider uh, what it launched next to, which is Anthem, and how it's bricking PlayStations. Uh, apparently, if you launch the game with certain issues, you it just shuts off and dies on you. Apparently, Sony is issuing refunds, no questions asked, because Anthem has been a major crap show. But it looks like, hey, Apex Legends is what a game looks like by EA, where EA has no involvement, and Anthem looks like a game where it's by EA, and EA has tons of involvement. It's clearer than nails. Also, let's talk about a vulnerability that we got in Thunderbolt. Apparently there's a new vulnerability called Thunderclap. Sorry, I just had to, it's called Thunderclap. And it, uh, it, there's an issue with how the Thunderbolt in technology works with your computer. It kind of just makes it so it can be not protected. I don't know technical jargon of how you hack things. Here you go, that's a great image. You got the malicious peripheral going over the DMA to the IO MMU to the physical address of the main DRAM and it all plugs in really shadily and don't do it. Don't, don't do unprotected thunderbolting. But let's talk about Thunderbolt 3 in another weird way, which we talked last week about how USB introduced a new standard of USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 for up to 20 gigabits per second of memory transfer. Well, apparently now we have USB 4 working with Thunderbolt 3 to give us 40 gigabits per second transfer speed, except for the name is even worse than USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2, because instead of it being USB space, for like it is for everything else, USB space three or anything like that. It's USB four condensed. Why? I love the speeds. I love the fact that Thunderbolt, like this is becoming an open standard. Thank you Intel for working with USB on this and just bringing it to USB four. But why the name? I can't handle it. If you, if you decide to change the next generation to being USB V for five, I might have to crack an egg and eat it after I've cooked it. That would be delicious. You know what else is cracked open? AMD's hopes at beating NVIDIA. It's a good segue right there. Uh, you wanna talk about something that's dead on arrival. Gigabyte has now 
finally unveiled its RX 590 cards. As expensive as a 1660 Ti and just sheer crap compared to it. Good job, Gigabyte. Way to keep up on the trains of winning. It's where I play. I play on those trains of winning. Netflix doesn't though, especially with anime series, because uh, yeah, have you watched the Death Note movie? Well, apparently they've announced a new Ultraman CG series that's coming. Hopefully it's more like Voltron, which is supposed to be pretty good as far as like anime reboots of Netflix stuff. But considering Netflix's track record with uh, anime adaptations, uh... And then Google has unveiled a major security vulnerability that's in macOS. They apparently let Apple know about it 90 days ahead of time, as is their Project Zero disclosure policy. Apple still hasn't fixed it, and it's a major problem with how macOS mounts memory configurations, which means that it could just be exploited in a way that's not healthy for anybody. And it's just a continuation of Apple not really giving a crap about their security. And I can't wait for everybody in the comments to let me know how Macs don't get viruses at all ever. But you know what has a virus? The Nintendo Switch. It's called Windows 10 because we talked about last week how Android got put on the Nintendo Switch. Well, now the uh, spyware officially labeled Windows 10 is uh, apparently being installed on Nintendo Switches. Why? Why? Uh-uh. Don't do it. And then there's more reports that DRAM prices should continue to fall. We talked about it in a Hot News episode a couple weeks ago about how we should be expecting a, a significant drop. Well, it's continuing to happen and latest reports are saying, yes, it's right on track to be cheaper. And then Intel made a, a comment about its discrete GPUs. Nothing that we couldn't already guess, but they said that it's gonna be good for consumers and good for competition. So we'll wait until 2020 till we get Project Z. And then what you're looking at on the screen, JI32K7AU4883 is a tremendously common password. That seems confusing because that seems like a pretty secure password. Well, apparently what's going on with that is that once you transliterate Chinese characters into the English keyboard, that is my password. That's what that means. So don't don't ever use JI32K7AU4883 as a password because it's gonna be easily hacked. And then in our first segment of a user submitted weirdest headline of the day, thanks Daryl for submitting this over on Twitter. If you wanna submit your own user headline of the day, the weirdest ones that you could possibly find, tweet at me, at UF Disciple. Give me your weirdest and strangest headlines. This one is Filipino authorities find more than 1,500 smuggled turtles and tortoises. Just what I love to hear when I wake up in the morning, you know, I'm scrolling through NPR, find this, stop on it for a few minutes, and it just brightens my day how there's a ton of turtles that are duct taped to luggage and shoes and clothing. This is not at all what I want. No, don't do this. Anyways, that's where I'm gonna end hot news today. If you wanna to submit your own user weird headline, do so at Twitter, at UF Disciple. Don't forget that this video is brought to you by our merch and Rickus's shirt that he's wearing, which is our merch. And he's not looking at me right now, so I guess it doesn't matter. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. You have just watched hot news, and I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Reese, where's our jingle?